Hi and welcome to the 21st video in our C Sharp for Beginners tutorial series. So we were in the middle of collections and then I kind of realized in the way that we were going, it would actually be better off benefiting you guys to actually go over classes before we go over hash tables and dictionaries, uh, which are going to be the last type of collections that we're going to see. I can show you them without classes, but I feel like it would lose a lot of the uh, teachable moments of using hash tables and dictionaries since most of them are going to be used with your own data types or classes that we're going to be creating. Uh, those are uh, similar to objects in PowerShell. They are actually considered objects in C Sharp uh, where we can have methods in them. We can have properties. Uh, so we're actually going to be creating a class today. So this is going to be a multi-part series because classes are quite of a heavy subject. Uh, and can get quite confusing if this is your first time uh, working object-oriented programming. Uh, so I'm going to be breaking it down in the most simplest forms that I can think of. Um, but again, if you guys have any questions or comments, leave uh, them down below in the comment section. I could definitely answer you guys uh, directly uh, for this maybe a little bit tricky uh, topic. So we're going to first start by actually creating our class. So right now, when you first create a console application, we have our program.cs, which is our main application. Now we can create the class directly in here, uh, but it is a best practice to have each class separate in its own CS or C sharp file. So we're actually going to go and create our own new C sharp class here just by right clicking on um, our project here and we can add. Now we can add a new item or we can just come in here. Um, and at the bottom, actually, um, you guys cannot see it. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and do a new item here. And the first item is class. Now, before we go ahead and just click on add, we are going to want to give our class a name. Now, I'm going to name this employee. Uh, since a lot of the things that we have been doing, especially with PowerShell, it's all been mostly related to like Active Directory and employees. So I'm going to keep it that same style. Um, but you can name your class like human, animal, um, monster, uh, or player, uh, really anything that you can think of that you could, that would represent potentially like multiple variables in it. So we're going to do an employee. We're going to click on add. And now this is going to open up into something that we haven't really seen before, uh, unless you're, you've been using like .NET 5. Uh, with .NET 6, uh, the programs really get created kind of empty with the program. So you might not be used to seeing a namespace uh, and then classes. Now, what I normally do is I just get rid of this internal keyword for now. Uh, we're just going to get rid of it. We're just going to be creating a class called employee. We are in the namespace classes. Now, your namespace might be a little different. The namespace name actually comes from your project name. So my project is called classes because that's what we are currently working on. And then by default, uh, C Sharp will actually import all these uh, system collections and uh, all the other stuff that you might actually want to use. Uh, so you could just leave these. You can also remove them. Uh, I usually just tend to keep them. They can quite uh, come in handy, especially if you're creating a class that might have uh, lists in them or array lists in them. Uh, it's good to have. All right, so now that we have our class employee, let's go ahead and let's just go into it first. And we're going to create a variable. So this is going to be a member variable. So we're going to make it a type int and we're going to give it the name employee ID. And just to keep with our naming standards, let's do a lowercase e, capital I for employee ID. Now that we have this what would be called like a blueprint of our class here or a blueprint of our data type employee. Let's actually go ahead and let's create our first employee just to see what it looks like. So we're gonna have to go back into our program here, our main application. Now there are two ways to actually go ahead and create an employee. So if we actually just go ahead and try to say employee um, test equals new employee, we are going to see that we get the red squiggly lines. Now show potential fixes. There are uh, quite a few things here. Uh, there is a using classes or classes.employee. 
so what we are actually going to do is we are going to say the using classes, uh, but another very common method is to actually have this here. So this would actually be very similar to our uh, employee here. We can actually just copy paste this in here. And we're just going to erase this. And our class is going to be a program. And then we can have a static void main string square bracket square bracket args and you can have your employee test in here and that will also work so those are the two methods that you can do uh, this is more of a dotnet 5.0 method um, so for this case what we are going to do is we are just going to say using uh, classes and we are going to create our employee uh, test equals new employee all right so now that we have our employee object created now we know that we have a variable here called employee id now if we actually go ahead and do a test oops, test all lowercase and we do a dot we actually don't the that employee ID and that is because we have not made it public so by default if you create variables in here so let's do a string first name and let's do a string last name here we are going to see that we actually never see these appear uh, we get the default values like get type uh, and to string but we actually don't see uh, the variable. And this is actually a very, very good practice. You might not necessarily want uh, someone to be able to modify uh, a object by simply dot notating and then making it equal something. Normally what we would be doing is we would be creating a method, a get or set method, which we'll be actually seeing in the next video. Today we are simply just creating the class in its very basic format. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing adding the keyword public. Now what this does is actually makes these variables um, accessible from outside of the class. So if we actually go ahead and we save that here, and now we do a dot notation after test, we will actually see that we have last name, first name, and employee ID. So we can actually set these. So let's go ahead and let's set our employee ID here to 1001. Let's set our uh, first name here. Let's set that to uh, jacked here. And let's set the last name to uh, programmer. All right. So now we have our object. We actually have values uh, in there. Now what we can actually do as well is if we go back to our class, we can actually create a method here. Uh, so once again, you can have private methods. So if we do a void uh, print info as a method, and we did uh, console.write line, let's do an interpolated string here. We're going to do employee ID, and we're going to make that uh, employee ID and then let's make a new line and let's do uh, first name and we're going to make that first name and once again we're going to do a new line and we're going to do last uh, name Oops. Uh, yeah lowercase and I'm going to change that name here to lowercase n so last name we are going to go ahead and put that as last name. And we are going to go ahead and do that. So when we call the print info, we are going to be basically writing out to the console. We're going to be writing all the information for that employee. So if we go ahead back in here, make sure we actually save our class here. If we go ahead and we try to use that print info, we're going to see it doesn't pop up. 
And once again, just like variables, our methods also have to be declared with public if we want to access them. Now, again, if you don't want someone to use a method, you could just make it a void method or a string method or anything. As long as you don't have that public keyword, someone can't call it from their application because maybe you want a method in here that could be used by another method that the user or client can actually call upon. Uh, that's just for uh, like safety methods or something that you don't necessarily want someone messing around with because it should only be called uh, on something else being called. Um, so let's go ahead and let's do test here dot print info open and close in curly brackets. So there we have it. And let's go ahead and let's run this here. And here we have our object. So as we can see, we actually have our employee ID, our first name and our last name. So everything comes up really, really nicely here. And we can actually go ahead and create another employee if we really wanted to. We can create this one as a good MP here, so for a good employee. And let's just copy paste that here so we can actually just uh, replace these items. But let's say if we actually just go ahead and omitted the first name and last name, we only give it employee ID. Let's just give it an employee ID of 1004 and let's try to print this out. So as you can see, it does work, but we do get an empty first name and an empty last name. Now we can actually fix this by going back in our our employee class and assigning a default value to first name and last name. Now let's do the default first name to John and the default last name to Doe for John Doe. Pretty common uh, default first name and last name. We can even do a John slash Jane Doe. Uh, this way it's just not uh, gender specific. Uh, we are very, very open. Uh, ended to not knowing what the first name is, it could really be anything. Um, so we're going to do John Jane Doe uh, because we simply don't know the employee. So let's go ahead and let's see what happens now. So as we can see here, now when we run our application for the first object that we created, our employee test here, which we assigned the first name and last name to Jacked Programmer, that actually stayed, it is still Jacked Programmer, but in our second one, where we didn't specify a first name or a last name, we actually got the default values showing up. Now, if we had put in a first name, the first name would show up and the last name would still be the default value. So it is always good to kind of implement default values uh, in case a user doesn't set one up. But we're going to be seeing in the future, uh, very, very shortly, uh, we can actually put in our values directly in here. Uh, so we would have like a thousand and four, uh, and then we would put in our name and then our name again, uh, and we can have objects created that way. We will see also how we can have methods that can set these values and that can get these values as well, because uh, those are all very, very important features in classes. It really makes it a lot safer for not having uh, bad values or garbage data in your objects or the users using that class improperly. So this is our default class. Uh, now I will be working with this same application in the next videos. Uh, so I will always be referencing back to this. We will be adding on to this. Uh, so by all means, you can definitely create this exact class. Or like I said, you could play around with it, uh, create one uh, for animals or create one for cars. Um, and you can have your own little uh, like model ID, uh, model name, um, or if you have like uh, animals, you could have uh, the animal ID or the animal type, um, and then have the first name and last name of the animal as well. Uh, so there is a lot of options that you can do for sure. Um, or if you do want to stick with the employee and follow along, that is all right as well. So that is basically the base of classes. So if you guys do have any questions or comments, please let me know down below. We will be uh, taking a look at this for the next couple videos. 
just breaking it down. So get some practice with these classes because they will be highly, highly used later on. Uh, and when we look at hash tables and dictionaries, we will be using classes quite heavily. Uh, and basically everything afterwards, we will be using classes quite heavily. So that's why I'm taking a little bit more time with these classes just to really get that understanding down uh, so we could move forward and create some uh, other applications for us. So once again, um, any questions or comments, please let me know in the comment section below. If it's specific, I will answer you directly. If it's something that I think can benefit a lot of people, I will be making a video on it. Please hit that like button and that subscribe button. And also make sure to hit that notification bell to be notified on that next video. And I will see you guys on the next video.